Welcome to the HR Happy Hour Work Break with Steve. And today, Madeline Lerano comes back to the work break. How are you, Madeline? Hey, Steve, I'm great. How are you doing? I'm great. So good to see you. And once again, and then it's my fault because I'm an awful person. <laughs> the last time we spoke, I think, was the last time we did a work break together, which was also the time we spoke before that. So it's weird, like, how my life is that I only really catch up with people when we're broadcasting to millions. But, uh, well, so be it. So how are you? What's been going on? Good. Well, you know, I also think it's just like the summer too, right? It's I think we talked about this last time. It's like March and April were so slow, like yeah. dropping on, and then August just fl- like flies by. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's been. It, yeah. I, I, I flipped the calendar the other day, whatever day yeah. it was. I could not believe. I don't know what happened in August. It's just I don't know what happened to it. But yeah, you know, I love the first thing I noticed when you joined the feed was the cool stuff going on behind you. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah. A little bit? Yeah, well, it's this whole office, this work from home has been a work in progress for me, which is a little bit crazy because I've worked from home for God forever. forever. And I typically, I was telling you this before, I like do calls in the kitchen because I've got the cabinets. It's like the best lighting. The house is filled with kids. So (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm in this dark, dark office. So I've been playing around with lights. Trish helped me out with some recommendations for lighting and then. Um, and then everybody was commenting that it looked like I was in a prison because the. <laughs> so I've got, and then, you know, some people had some suggestions on bookshelves or art. And um, I'm not an art collector, but I do have kids that. You know, yes, they're in your residence. You don't need to be yeah. out. You can create it. Right. I just love the color. That's the colorfulness of it is the best thing. And that's what I've got to do. If we're going to be endlessly doing these video calls. Yeah. I think I need to brighten up the background a little bit here too, because I feel like it's getting just washed out. Like uh, I'll have to figure that out, but that looks great. So, Hey, what's, uh, we've been busy, like Trish and I, H3 and Karen, we've been super busy. I imagine you have been too. Is there anything kind of of note the last couple months since we talk or have we been today? Anything going yeah. on that's interesting? It's been busy. So, um, you know, and exciting. And I think there's a lot more virtual events and webinars coming up this fall. So getting ready for that. I have a really exciting project with Jobbyte and the folks at Telemetry, which is part of Jobbyte, sure. um, on recruitment marketing. So new research coming out in the next few weeks on that. And nice. and it's also Global TA Day, which I didn't really know was a thing, but it's... I got an email about it. I don't know much about it, to be honest with you. Yeah, so I know that there's a conference around it. I know there's a lot of sessions today. And to be honest, I'm not even sure who's, who's hosting it, but... Yeah. Uh, it just has me thinking about the industry and I feel like, you know, we're just in, we're just lucky. There's a lot of people yeah. in like their industry that don't like their, their job. And this is such a nice community. Yeah, that's, I'm glad you mentioned that virtual events. Cause it just reminded me of something I did want to mention too today. It's, oh, I think it kicked off last night. And I know there's a time difference and everything. HR tech China is going on right now. It's today and tomorrow essentially. And there is an in-person component out in Shanghai. There's an exhibit hall. There are people there. I've seen, the, I've seen a lot of the pictures. I know Trish was like, connected to today like she kind of had her welcome video that her her she i saw her like her her head on the giant screen in shanghai that looked pretty cool i saw a picture of that today but i, I now refresh my memory now i know you've been to china did you go twice to china or just the one time once but it was you know, probably the highlight of my professional travel career for sure well i'm glad we did that i mean i've, I've been a few times but i'm glad you were able to get to go i hope we get to go back that's for sure because i saw the pictures today and i was like oh man you know that would have been so much fun to be in Shanghai today. Although it's super hot there, I know I, that's one thing I know for sure. Much as it is like everywhere else too, by the way. So um, yeah, that's really cool. Uh, Global TA day, talent acquisition for folks yeah. who are following right. home, right? We're, we're not talking about anything weird. Hey, I have one thing I wanted to mention. Actually, a couple things. Um, I follow like when they add words to the dictionary. I don't know why I, that fascinates me a little bit, and. Uh, they added a bunch of words to dictionary.com. And my favorite one that they added, uh, Madeline, I don't know if you're going to know this one. Were you a pro wrestling fan at, at all? A bit of uh, Steve Austin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Steve Steve really big. Made famous by the legendary Iron Sheik and then maybe more popularized by The Rock later on. Jabroni, Madeline. Has been to dictionary.com. Yeah, it's like wrestling term for like a, a dope or a fool or... <laughs> Technically, it's like that that wrestler you've never heard of that they drag out there to wrestle <laughs> against like Hulk Hogan and Hulk Hogan throws him around for, for 10 minutes. Yeah. That's a 
Brownie. And it's kind of like a derogatory term, like a, and I don't know, maybe it's more of a guy thing. Like I, it's great to call someone a jabroni. It's like a big insult. It's like, it's oh, awesome. that's good. But that's jabroni good. made it to dictionary.com. I was excited. To do that. That's very good. That's exciting. Good for pro wrestling. Yeah. And speaking of insults, can I tell you my favorite insult? If you ever need to insult somebody. All right, let's hear it. There it is. It, it, it's nuanced a little bit. So <laughs> let's, let's pretend the person's like in the room. Let's pretend like he's right or she's right there. And I would look at the person and I would say, who's this clown? <laughs> now here's why this is the best insult. Because one, you're calling the person a clown. Right? Yeah. And two, you're implying that they're not even one of the better known clowns. <laughs> A killer insult. Right, right. And you're not asking them. You're asking someone else while staring at them and they can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Real threat. <laughs> so how are things in Boston, by the way? That's usually one of the things we talk about um, when we do the show together. How, how, I mean, what's the situation for school? You have great, you have kids in grade school or, or uh, middle school. I'm not sure what, what year. But. Yeah, grade school. And we don't know. I mean, I think every town is a little bit different and a lot of towns have put together a plan and they've gone back and we have a plan that the committee approved like a hybrid plan, but the teachers association hasn't approved it yet. So right. we think that they will be in person two days a week in October. So, October. Wow. Man, what a long haul it's been. When did they close the schools in, around your area? March 13th. I know. <laughs> I like how you know the exact date. I know the exact date, the exact time I got the email. And I have this, it's funny because I have this picture of like picking the kids up. And I, at the time, we didn't think they were going back till April 7th. Right. So I was like, guess what? No school till April 7th. And they're screaming and jumping up. And then you get to like May 7th and they're crying. We want to go back. Yeah, it's 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 incredible uh, how the college is just uh, well. Because we have that we have a connection to Boston through my son, which I've talked about a couple times on the show with you. He did not. Did I, I don't know if I told you this or I did. I know this the last time we did the show. He did not go back to BU for this semester. No, oh, he, I didn't know that. Yeah, he he. I think he made the call up kind of the last minute, so he didn't go back. He's uh, trying to take some classes through one of the community colleges, I think, you know, at home. And yes, yeah, planning on to go back in the winter, but. What, man, more and more I'm reading about, and I, and I don't know what's going on at BU technically because I kind of stopped following it once he decided not to go back. But I did, I did turn on the news for like five minutes today, like when I was, was taking a break. And I, it's a turn on CNN, and, and all I see, and I took a photo of it too because I was so horrified. My alma mater, University of South Carolina, it's like the hotbed of COVID, like everywhere in the country. It's like a thousand plus cases. Oh. There, They've got like 60% of their quarantine spaces already filled up with kids. They have no idea what they're doing. And I hate to say that because that's where, my, you know, I went to school. Right. And uh, it sounds like they have no control over what's going on. And I just think the colleges are just going to be awful for a while. Because yeah. who, who's more, I can't think of any more reckless age in your life, right? right. Oh, yeah. You don't want to listen. Right? Yeah, you don't want to follow. You don't want to know when you can legally drink. You don't want to, you just, you want yeah. to do. So I have an interesting story about colleges, actually. Yeah, let's hear it. So we have, you know, we live in the suburbs now. So we're out of the city, we live in the suburbs and there's been this house that someone owns, but no one's really lived in it since we've lived here for eight years. So it's you know, always just been empty. And all of a sudden the other day, two young college boys knock on the door with flowers and they say, hi, we're your new neighbors. We, really? go, to, <laughs> we go to Babson College, we're renting this house um, there's a, just a couple of us and we're going to live here and it's nice to meet you. And I thought, this is so nice. Wow. And you look out the window and there's tons of boys <laughs> all the time. and they're playing beer pong. And oh, I was going to say, are they raging? Is it like, yeah, yeah awesome. They found a place to get out of the, the city and get away from it and just go crazy. All yeah. right. I like yeah. it. They're not, they're, they're definitely pretty mild um, compared to, I think, how most kids are in college and probably how I was, but it's just funny to have college kids. Oh, that is hysterical. Yeah. I'm just thinking about like recklessness in college. Like one of my favorite stories was we were doing this dumb scavenger hunt. That was like a thing for a while. You know, yeah. it was a really, really organized one though, with a proper list of things you had to get. And I'll never forget this. One of the things we had to get was, um, I forget what fast food chain it was. Let's just say it was like Arby's or something. The, the uniform at the time, say, for the Arby's, the, the people who worked there, they had, they had some kind of a hat, like an Arby's hat, or maybe just a cap, but they had to wear it. And yeah. one of the things you had to get, you had to get a cap off someone who was working at the Arby's. And like, oh. I think, how are we going to do that? And then we just figured, oh, we'll just go to the drive-thru 
and park just a little far away from the, the, the window. So the, the Arby's person, I think it was a guy, had to lean a bit. And when he leaned just far enough, the hand came out of like the back window. We grabbed the hat, we took off. <laughs> oh, not COVID friendly today, Steve. No, no. <laughs> Real, a real yeah. brownie move, I'd say, as well. So. <laughs> I, one more thing I wanted to add, GG, before it gets too late. My, uh, I'm doing a webinar tomorrow with my friends uh, from Paycom. And look, I figured out how to do this. That's how you sign up for it. It's at 3 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be super fun. It's all about uh, employee experience, technology being kind of the connective tissue between kind of a great employee experience and kind of um, uh, improving outcomes and, and business outcomes and manager outcomes. It's going to be super cool. It's brand new, brand new material, Madeline. Breaking awesome. out new material. So yeah. that's, how you, that's how you can find that. I'll leave that up for a second. Oh, and uh, so relevant too right now with everything going on. It's like, how do you make the employee experience yeah. meaningful during today? Yeah, it's going to be super cool. All right. Well, this is awesome, Madeline. Thanks for taking a few minutes. Thanks for taking a work break. Thanks, Steve. Uh, yeah. Great to catch up. And I promise, Madeline, I will be better. I'll be a better friend. We're not, we're not going to talk, we'll, we'll not be uh, uh, over the live stream. We'll find some other way. We'll, we'll make Fridays our text day. I'll start texting you on Friday. Yeah, that's a good idea. So, uh, all right, everybody, thanks so much for listening. Check out all the show archives at hrhappyhour.net. Uh, thanks, Madeline. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. See you.